All right, two more minutes and we'll be rolling. Food and Podcast. I am your host, Keith, and I'm joined with my co-host, Seriously. What's up? And we are live here at the Hoffer Mill in Wasteport, PA. And tonight, for the first half hour, we're going to talk with the Late Layton Community Crime Watch group. And the second half hour, we'll be talking with the Late Layton Pool Pals. And, and at the first half hour, we're actually going to be talking about our debate question from last week. In the second half hour after we're done talking to the Light Pool Pals, we're going to be talking about the mystery man of 21 faces that mocked the police department and stocked the stores in Japan with cyanide filled candy. Yeah, that's intense. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. I mean I just I just read it when I got here. And yeah. That's, that's a crazy story. It's, it's bizarre, isn't it? It's very bizarre. So that's coming up in the second half hour. Plus, we'll have Colossal Radio Info. And uh, welcome, guys. Thanks for having us. Uh, introduce yourselves and tell us what, what we have in group. Okay, so I'm Nick Smith. I'm the president of the High Committee Crime Watch. Um, I'm actually a founding member. Uh, the Crime Watch was founded a couple, well, I shouldn't say founded. It was, it was, um, revamped a couple years ago uh, during a, a firework crisis in town. Uh, fireworks uh, were a big deal for the community members and what I worked on in conjunction with the mayor, Clark Ritter at the time, is he said start a crime watch. And we started a crime watch, uh, you know, community members were upset about the fireworks and we circulated petitions and the petitions was all about getting a, a stronger pro ordinance on these fireworks. So we succeeded and I've been along with the group ever since. Right? Nice. Your My name's Diana Thomas. Uh, I'm also a member of Crime Watch because I think I saw it advertised and I was intrigued by it and I thought we needed something like that in the community. Right. And what I did learn was, if you see something, say something, and that's totally the truth. <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm Laura Wolf. I am also a member of the Crime Watch in the Um Got involved approximately two, maybe years ago, mm -hmm. when our neighborhood had a really bad problem with a neighbor who was committing a lot of different crimes and went to the police, went to the borough council for help, Told us we should go see Crime Watch, see what it's all about, where we learn to work with the police and the borough and a neighbor's now in jail. So it works when we work it. Right. Yes, definitely. <laughs> so tell us about the group, like how what do you do with the group? Uh, well, first of all, I just want to say uh, Ray here is our uh, vice president, and Laura has recently taken on the task of being our, our secretary and treasurer. So they're very two important people uh, to this group. Um, the Blue High Community Crime Watch is simply a public assist to the PD. Um, you know, we've had numerous people come to our meetings and, and what the bottom line is, is, is when crimes are being committed in your community, 
we need to gather information and then report it. And that's what we're all about. I mean, we don't we, we don't want to get engaged with any of that stuff uh, physically. Uh, we just want to be there. We want to see what's going on, gather the info, and then report it. So a lot of it is basically documentation and then delivering that to whoever's going to be able to put that to use. Definitely. Right. Which is good. Instead of, you know, just complaining about something, you're mm -hmm. doing something about it, right. which is way more than most people do. Yeah. So how long would you say it takes? Like, so if someone has a concern or something's going on that needs to be addressed or whatever, would you say, obviously it's not an immediate fix. You can't just go, you know, tag on and that's the end of it. So how, like, how, how does that process work for you? Well, I guess it depends what's going on. I mean, it could be as far as a couple of days to, in Laura's case, months, years. years. Um, and, and like I said, that depends on the situation. I mean, when I was battling the, the firework crisis, you know, we went to the police department and obviously there are ordinances as far as, you know, where you can set up fireworks located to a, a structure and things like that. But, you know, the bottom line was when we would call and report the crime and it would go to the comm center, finally get to the PD, the PD would show up, it was all over. Right. Um, so then we got with the mayor and the mayor said, you know, this is what you need to do. So that's when we started collecting signatures for petitions and we went to borough council meetings and, you know, once the, 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 the council had seen the community come as a front and say, this is a problem, we need to solve it. Um, they were able to help us out with that. So. Good, good. How can people join the group? Uh, people can join, uh, it's not a hard process. Uh, we meet every third Wednesday of the month um, at the Lehigh Municipal Building at 7 p.m. So it's it's a public thing. Come in, it's advertised on Facebook. We have a Facebook page, Lehigh Community Crime Watch, and you're more than welcome to come. I also try to get out uh, clips in the Times News. You might see them once in a while. You know, just about when we hold our meetings, you know, where they're at, and what, what we're all about. So it's not like you have to take a shift. No. Outside in your car. So for like the TV show. However, we have done that, and I, I think that's something that we should continue to do. We've done, I call them block patrols, and we just, you know, take a cruise around town, see what's going on, because you never know what you're going to see. And like I said, we're never, we're never physical with anybody. If we see something, we say something. We, we, you know, we're all about documentation. If it's something that we can take a picture of, take a video of, or you know what have you. I mean, that's that's a big thing. You know, get license plate numbers, get descriptions of the people committing the crimes, uh, locations, every detail you can get in whatever time frame the situation allows. Right. Hey, what do you talk about at these meetings? Um, well, we hope we um, have an internal meeting, you know, new business, old business, you know, future events, that type of thing. But what I like to do is I like to get speakers and I like to have them come talk about, you know, just about everything. I mean, we've had representatives from drug and alcohol, we've had the DA, we've had the county sheriff, local PD, the mayor, um, and hopefully this year coming we can get in conjunction, conjunction with other groups and uh, host like, uh, what's the word, uh, group meetings okay. uh, together. <laughs> they find out maybe what they are involved with, or right. we're involved with, and what another community or town would be involved with. You never know if a car is going to be driving through and driving from, so that way we're all connected and can at least help each other. Right, yeah, sure. There yeah. are very, very active crime watches out there other than the height. I mean, I would say we're very oh. compared to some some groups. I mean, you have West Penn, Jim Thorpe, um, Coldale, um, and I'm sure there's definitely others out there. And any community can start their own. Like, uh, Lee Heighton has their own, Weissport, the baby, have their own, Franklin. Okay. I, I did tell people to try to do that. And mm -hmm. Well, we welcome anybody to join our meetings and uh, see what it's all about and, uh, you know, do what they will. I mean, we're, we're glad to help anybody. The so, other thing is, if you go from 1st Street in Lee Heighton to maybe 10th Street, 
everybody along the way has a different situation or a different problem. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's nice to have people in our area from different streets mm -hmm. to come in and say what their issues are that the police can't be everywhere. But so, you know your own area. Right. So the idea is you want somebody from possibly each block in the area for it? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, as our as our group grows bigger, I, I what we've talked about in the past, you know, kind of have like representatives of different parts of town that we call them block captains or area captains, and what they essentially do is be the rep for the area. And if people are having problems, they can kind of go to them and say, you know, you know, Laura, what do I do? And she can sense. direct them in the right in the right way. Yeah. So if, people, if someone's having an issue or concern, um, do they have to become a member of the group to come report it or bring it to light? Or can they come to a meeting and say, hey, this is happening near me, yep. like what can be done about it? Um, anything, I mean, you don't have to become a member. I mean, obviously becoming a member, like I said, isn't very hard. We don't charge dues or anything like that. You're just walking the door. Um, so it's just as, as easy as going on our page, finding my contact information, giving me a call, coming to our meetings, you know, whatever the situation is. Um, some people, honestly, I think part of our membership problem is some people are just afraid. You know, they don't want any type of retaliation. So they can come to, to anybody within the group, like the three of us here, and kind of tell us what's going on in a, you know, private fashion. And obviously, I mean, right now you're here on a podcast, but for the most part, would you say your group is kind of, not anonymous, but like you don't kind of put your faces out there in the spotlight, or do you? Um, we actually, been, you know, that's part of our, our, our plans. You know, we try to be more involved with the community. Um, when uh, Chief Joe Sparrich was the chief of the Night Police Department, um, he, you know, got us involved with the uh, National Night Out. And we like to go to that event, get out literature, um, and just start talking with people. I mean, that's one of the better ways to get involved uh, with the community, letting people know who we are, what we're all about. And just that, so people know it's a thing. I mean, I think a lot of people feel, you know, that there's a group in the area watching things going on. I think there's a sense of security in that. Um, any kind of lo local events we're gonna try to weasel our way into, and just show our faces that way our presence is better known. And you're getting, um, I'm assuming, good collaboration between local government, local police with you guys. They're, they're pretty open to... Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I said, we've had county officials come to our meetings and offer any, any help that they can provide. Our local kind of uh, municipality has definitely been a very uh, support to us. You know, uh, council members, actually Councilman Donnie Rarick has been a tremendous help to us in, in kind of forming the group and, and uh, getting our name out there because when he was mayor of Lehigh, he actually uh, led the crime watch at the time. And so he's very familiar with our struggles and, you know, things like that. Nice. So what other things do you do for the community? Are you involved in anything else? Um, yeah, I do tons of stuff. I mean, I I try to help out any way I can. Um, I've I've done you know little volunteer work with the the borough. Um, I've been with the Lehigh Fire Company for some time now. Um, my my membership isn't as active now that I'm going through college and stuff right now. And, you know, but I've definitely any way I can try to. I I'm a big I'm a big person in local politics. I try to waste. Uh, awareness as far as you know, getting young people out to vote and things like that. Uh, local school board. I was uh, student council president in Lehighton. I uh, I spoke. I, I'm 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 one to uh, speak out on community issues. I work at a local manufacturer for with pressure castings. So you know, Lehighton's a, a big deal for me. I think one day I can you know help guide it in the right direction. Um, sitting in a different seat. Um, but for now, this is where I'm at, and this is where I'd like to like to you know get my foot on the ground and hit it from the ground. Uh, you know, nice. Do you have to be of a certain age to become part of your group? I would say no. 
Um, I mean, I, obviously, yeah, obviously with if you're, reason, but. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I've been I've been a member of this Crime Watch group since I'm probably 15, okay. 16 or 15. Um, and then actually, you know, that's what a lot of you know that's what surprised a lot of people. You know, I would I would do this type of thing, go to different events and things like that, and people would say, you know. I've always gotten the oh you're probably 18 and I, you know at the time I'm like no I'm not 18 you know I mean, now nowadays people are like oh you're probably and now I'm only 18 but anything anyway we welcome anybody obviously if there's you know it boils down to the parents you know if if you know we don't really don't want kids going out in the community if there's actual dangerous things going on. You know, we want the parents to kind of take that role on. Obviously, if emergencies are going on, you need to call 911. Don't contact Crime Watch. You know, that's just one thing I like to stress. If there are actual emergencies, dial 911. Don't dial Nick Smith's phone number. Um, so, but yeah, we we, I'm like I said, I'm I'm big into young folks like myself getting involved in in local issues and um, different community projects. So, you know, anybody is more than welcome to come. So, if I were in a town that didn't have a crime watch, mm -hmm. how would one go about starting one? Well, for us, we had a lot of support. I mean, like I said, Donnie Barrick was, was very helpful. I mean, he got us in uh, connection with Byron Chanel, who uh, was essentially, you know, me years ago. Um, so, I was able to talk to him, kind of get things rolling. Uh, I would say, first contact your local police department and even sit down with the mayor and say, you know, I'm concerned about what's going on in the community. I'd like to form a public crime watch group. And, you know, where do I start? Um, we kind of had things, I'm going to say, set up for us. I mean, we had, you know, literature, signage, everything that we really needed um, to, to make ourselves known available at the time. Um, I believe there is a, maybe Laura, you can touch on this, a national site. Yes. You can uh, reach out to and. Right. Just Google National Crime Watch Organizations. You're going to find tons of information. We went on there and found so much information about what our organization could be doing, how to go about that, how to reach out for help from the local police department, things like that. Um, one of our main things that we're looking forward to doing this season is to have a campaign to get some Crime Watch signs that we can post throughout the community. Um, hopefully we'll be able to canvas some businesses and some private people that just want to donate. We don't have a finalized cost yet. They are quite expensive. But it has been shown to be proven that with those signs posted, the criminals know that people are watching. Right, so they're less likely to do something in your neighborhood. Right. So the more we can get that word out, you know, that's the least people can do is post a sign mm -hmm. or contribute to a sign that will get the word out that hey, somebody's watching. Right? Yeah. You know, and then one of the great things I think the county did was open up their tip line. They have a Facebook page with a Carbon County tip line, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. um, I was a great poster on there because it's anonymous. Mm -hmm. They can't show your name or show your phone number or anything about who's posting and it just would go to them and say, hey, this is what is happening, you know, we're following and I have video or whatever, you know, and if the police need evidence, they can contact you, they can come back and see you a week later and say, hey, do you have that information yet? Or did yeah. you get a license plate number? Because we've seen that car in other areas and it really works. And, you know, these, these criminals are ongoing constantly in the same different neighborhoods, different times of the day, different times of the week. People see them here, there, and everywhere, but we don't all know that we're seeing the same person, right? right. So that's one way we can all work together in the different communities. So that would be nice to bring some of the other Crime Watch people to our meetings or just maybe a county Crime Watch to get together and learn right. what's going on in your neighborhood. Right, because right. I'm sure a lot of things that happen really heightened aren't isolated to the height. Correct. Um, I mean, I even as when I was a kid, um, I lived in Wilmington. There, I was walking home from the school bus one day, and um, a van pulled up, and there was a guy, and he actually tried to convince me to get in the van, and I ran, and um, 
the police actually came and questioned me because I, I went to my grandmother's house and she was closest. And they said that the same van had been reported mm -hmm. in several places around Poverty as well. And I mean, I was a little so I don't even know if they caught the guy, but I mean, that you're right. I mean, it doesn't, those people don't just stick to like one block, right? They're, they move all over the place. So it definitely would be beneficial to be able to kind of cross what's going on in other communities. Oh well, yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah. Have you seen a change since you started the group? Um, I think our, our presence is definitely no. Um, I mean, I can't really speak for sure. Uh, I'd like to think so. Um, I think there are a lot more problems in our community than what meets the eye. Right. And, uh, that's, that's obviously why we're here to try to help find a solution. I mean, I think, I think the drug problem uh, contributes to a lot of different things. I mean, I think it contributes to, I mean, it definitely contributes to a thievery, um, you know, um, domestics, um, you know, maybe even child abuse situations and things like that. Um, I think, I think that is a definitely systemic problem. I don't know one solution to, uh, to fix it. I don't think there is. But I think we as a community, when we come together, I mean, we're the strongest body of people when we're, you know, advancing together as one. I think, you know, for starters, I think we need to educate the youth, you know, try to do our best to keep them, you know, on the right path. And I definitely think, you know, um, Parents that you know are living in communities where you know they're seeing a lot of these problems coming out to our meetings might be beneficial because some of the speakers we have there um, have tons of information and uh, it's it's just very educational and it opens your eyes up to a lot of things. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. So. I guess I can't dress up in my mask and my cape and start running around the night. Well, you could, but. I could. I think that I could just cry and watch you kind of report me. <laughs> Say there's some crazy lady yeah. running around behind me with the mask. But, so no vigilantes. No. Nope. Right? right? We carry no weapons. We're not there to stop what's going on, we're there to help the police and aid right. them. To do their job better. Right. So then for the most part, like you obviously don't like even talk to if something's going on, you don't even talk to them or you just document. Right. Right. Yep. And even just saying to them, you know, I'm documenting this and we will be giving this over to the authorities and they're like, Yeah, right, you know, but you know, then they get contacted in another day or two. Right. It's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> there is something to this. Right. Yeah, definitely. So you, you have a meeting coming up next month. Uh, what do you have planned for that? Yep, we have a meeting every third uh, Wednesday of the month. Uh, this month will be March 20th at 7 at the Lehigh Municipal Building. Um, this is actually our first time meeting back for the year 2024. Um, we, we took a break during around the Christmas holiday and then the impending winter uh, with the multiple storms, we decided to hold off. So really, this one's just going to be, you know, welcome back. You know, for any newcomers, this is what Crime Watch is all about. This is how you can be beneficial to your community, you know, and just kind of like a, a recap and discuss some things we'd like to do, get involved in, and lay out our plan for the year. So there's a perfect opportunity for somebody new to show up. Definitely, definitely. Thanks. Well, we'll see you there then. Maybe. <laughs> uh, is there, do you have any events coming up that you're going to be at? Um, I can't speak on any uh, for certain. I mean, we'll definitely be involved in the National Night Out, uh, which I think last year was August. Um, you know, we'll be involved in that. I'd like to, like I said, weasel ourselves into some more community events. Um, and as those get, you know, planned, because there usually are pretty many events uh, in the spring and summer in the height. We will let everybody know what we're getting involved in the uh, whether it may be the Times News or our Facebook page. You know, we'll make it known what's going on. Nice. All right. Last week I posted a debate topic, and 
I ask, if animals could talk, which one would be the rudest? What do you, what's your opinion on that? Birds. Birds. Birds are so rude. Yeah. Yeah. Specifically, starlings. They are rude and nasty and annoying and mean. They're all the negatives. <laughs> Listen, I'm outside with dogs and these things are swooping down at me. Like. Yeah. Dive on me. Yeah. 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 They even made a movie about that with Melissa McCarthy. <laughs> I don't think I saw it. Yeah, well, see, the problem is I got tricked into watching it because it's listed as a comedy, but it's not really funny. It's actually kind of sad. But I think the funny part is the stupid bird that's starling that's like attacking her. When she, when she guarded, she has to wear a football helmet because they're rude. Birds. Birds are nasty. What about you, Paul? What would you think is the rudest? What would be the rudest animal if you could talk? The rudest animal. Well, honestly, I'm going to say a cat. Cat? I think cats think a lot, you know, about what's going on. And if we really knew what they had to say, I think we'd be utterly surprised. <laughs> yeah, they probably tell us the truth about things we didn't really know about. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cats is one of the popular answers that we got, and birds. And we actually had people say a llama would be the uh, reason. A llama? Llama. And a lion. Hmm. A lion, I don't think it's rude. I think it just wants to eat your face. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's rude. I think that's just aggression. So that was our debate question from last week. And you can check our Facebook page out tomorrow around 11.30 a.m. for this week's debate question. And your answers will be read during our next show. So, yeah. Interesting. It is interesting. Right. Is there anything else you want to reach out to the group? Um, other than what we really talked about, no. I mean, I, I hope the community would get more involved, come out to our meetings, and hopefully we can uh, find some solutions to the problems going on. Where do you see this group in the next couple of years? Um, well, for me, I, I would like to see more more people my age get involved. I mean, that's a that's just a, a trend in in anywhere you are. Right. I mean, just people my age just don't get involved in much of anything. I mean, they're tied up in their lives. I mean, I'm very tied up in my life, but this is something that I I took passion in and have been a part in, so I've made it an obligation to, to try to be here every step of the way. Um, I, think, I think that people my age definitely have uh, new perspectives on things and definitely uh, some good ideas compared to the, you know, more old-fashioned folks that have, you know, they're very stubborn. And so <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm, what I'm getting to is I think when we mix the two, um, we can find solutions on a lot of things. Right. So it's all about, it. it's, it's all community effort. Um, so that's it. So if there is a youth out there that's watching and they're thinking about coming, what would you, what advice would you give them to convince them to come to just one meeting? Well, I would say if you want to grow up in a safer society um, where you don't have to be afraid to walk out the door at night or, you know, just do anything with your friends, I, I would advise you to come and, and learn different uh, things to not only keep yourself safe, uh, but to improve, improve what's going on. Right. Be aware. I think, you know, just the only comment I have, I think a lot of people um, are very naive, you know, to the to the simple fact that, you know, all oh, this is small town, like, you know, that couldn't happen here. It, you know, it, it very well it could, and we see it on the news every day. Right. So we should be more better prepared than, than not. Well, and like I said before, it's definitely better to not just be upset and complain about something, mm -hmm but actually be active in doing something about it. Right, because yeah. like today, people are quick to post something on Facebook, yeah. but that doesn't get anywhere. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I see that all the time. Even if we didn't actually come to a solution, we tried. Right. And I think that means a lot. And it, it definitely, I sleep good on that. So, all right. All right. Interesting. Do you have a crumb watch in your area? On the mountain? Well, <laughs> 
the crime yeah, watch is on the mountain, it's yeah. my huskies. They yeah. watch everything that's going on. <laughs> A nosy neighbor, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, there there is a, a crime watch in Velvet Sound. It's called like Nana. <laughs> She's always <laughs> peeking out her window, <laughs> and she will tell everyone. So <laughs> and it's not always a crime. Thank God she's not Facebook anymore. All right, thank you guys for coming. <laughs> Thanks for uh, for having yes. us. Yep. Wish you success in your group, and if uh, you have anything coming up, let us know, and we'll share it. You're more than welcome to come. All right, thank you. All right. Thanks. All right. Thanks. I'm going to call you Batman from now on. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put the bat signal up. Like, we should. Lehigh needs a bat signal. Yeah. A crime watch. Lehigh needs a crime bad. watch symbol that we like show up in the sky. There you go. We should do that. I'm going to write counsel a letter. Well, I'm going to talk to Becky about it in two seconds. Yeah, there you go. All right, we're going to go into a commercial break, and okay, we'll be right back. Security Podcast. We were just talking with the Lee Community Crime Watch, and hopefully, everybody learned some new things about the group if you didn't already know. Or just learned about the group. Or learned about the group. Yeah, because yes. I actually didn't know there was a crime watch, and I feel like I know a lot about stuff in the United, and I didn't know that. I know more about you. The crime Watch knows me now. <laughs> <laughs> Right. <laughs> they know where to find you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, every other Monday. <laughs> <laughs> so you know where to find them too. Yeah, that's yeah. true, right? Every, well, I already every told third them. Wednesday, is that what it is? Yeah. 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 Well, it already gave it away. They see a masked, caped vigilante yeah, and it's really high and it's totally me because I just gave them that. <laughs> 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 All right, now we're joined by members of the Lady Pool Pals. They're here to tell us about some upcoming events and all the things that they do. Uh, welcome to the group. Thank you. Uh, Thanks for having us. Tell us about yourselves and what you're so, doing. Uh, so, my name is Becky. I'm actually, I just accepted the role of secretary for the Pool Pals, uh, which is super exciting and kind of nerve wracking because our previous secretary, Kim, has been absolutely amazing and Kim's been with from the beginning, correct? Yes. So uh, since the pool house has been established, as has Tracy. Um, not as long. Not as long. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I feel like I have some pretty big shoes to fill. Uh, but it's exciting. So and the pool house are really uh, they've done a lot of really, really incredible things for the borough. And I think that's what we're headed for in the future as well. Um, even though the pool house initially was established to obviously help get the pool back in working and functioning order um, at a time when the borough did not have the money to essentially fork it out to get it up to standards and have it functioning again. Um, so that's what the pool house really kind of stepped up and did. Um, and then uh, once that, now that it is 
in working order and it's beautiful. It's I don't know if you've been it's to the pool. It's, it's huge, it's incredible. Um, so there's a couple of things that obviously natives maybe won't have to do about them, but um, I think more our group is changing now is more towards like the uh, Linda Schoenberger Memorial Swim Fund, which we are having a bingo for on um, March 17th, so St. Patrick's Day. Um, and what that does is that actually raises money for families of low income to apply for pool passes. Nice. Which is pretty interesting. So that's, yeah. that's nice because the, sometimes they're not cheap, especially if you have a lot of kids. If you have a lot of kids, you have a big family. Um, even if you don't buy the pass, just getting in daily to, to go to the pool is $5 for kids, I think. I don't know if the rates change, so don't quote me on that. Um, but you think you have four children, and then you take them there, so you have to pay for them to get in and yourself. And then if you feed them there, you want to stay all day, it can be a costly day. So um, even though their food is also very inexpensive, um, it is very good. <laughs> so if you are there, do recommend you eat. But you don't have to. That's what's nice, too. You can bring your own. Uh, the pool allows you to bring your own food in. Um, so if it's you know a low income family that can't afford to eat there, but the food they were awarded passes through with this uh, the swim fund, then they could still enjoy the day, you know, and still be able to to, to eat there but spend the entire day there, and not feel like they have to go home. Just keep the Snickers out of the pool. <laughs> 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 so I think last year, how many passes did we? It is 14. So I think our goal now going forward is to at least double it every single year. So, so this year we're striving for 28 family classes. Right. So, yeah. It's pretty, pretty fun. <laughs> so how can people join the group? Our meeting for pool houses every third Wednesday at 6.30 at the Leighton Rec Center. So you can come to our meetings and it's just once a month on a third Wednesday. Right. And what's involved in being a member? Uh, we do community events. Uh, we have well, we have the Linda Fund that we are doing for the, the bingos coming in March. We have the Family Fund Night uh, at the pool, which is July 20th. Um, so there's things to volunteer for that. And we have other fun and other activities coming up, um, but we can volunteer for those. Uh, it's a fun, great group to, to be with. It is a really great group. Uh, we have a really incredible president, Mark Hoffman. Um, his wife is our vice president, Diane. So um, they're both really incredible leaders. Mm -hmm. um, they really take into consideration um, the group as a whole. So not individually what's best, but like what is best for everybody and, and what works for everybody and let's work as a team and a group. Uh, and I think that says a lot about why and how the Cool Pals has accomplished what they have in such I don't want to say a short amount of time, but um, it hasn't very it hasn't been a lengthy amount of time. They were able to raise the money, have the pool put put in. I mean, they kind of made things happen very very quickly. Like last year, we put up a new pavilion that was completed. Yes. Um, so things like that that we do. Uh, at this point, I don't think there's any more space for any more pavilions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, we always try to we do but, to improve. Right, like, anything that cool, we can do. Like, things you know for everybody. Yeah, and then um, our previous year's Family Fun Night was actually served kind of as a fundraiser uh, for the Pool Pals, which now that we've established our, our bingo being uh, a big fundraiser, we're actually, our Family Fun Night will be changing, so it'll be more of a give back uh, to the community this year. Nice. Yeah, so I mean, the better that we do at our fundraising events, obviously the more that we can kind of coordinate, like, um, like I know, I know this has been in discussion because I know Nicole, your daughter, is all for this for family fun night. She wants a, an ice cream social and stuff like that. So there will be a lot of fun events for kids to, to enjoy, not just swimming in the pool. Right. And I also want to participate in the Halloween break this year, too. So my daughter is going to uh, work that one. <laughs> <laughs> she will have that committee. So I'm anticipating a blow up pool party on the back of the trailer. <laughs> this is what I need to see. Yeah. You, I mean, it could be awesome. It might be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> you have to see it. You could be in it. You could be in the pool. Right. Listen, I'll be in the pool. 
<laughs> yeah, and then you can be whipping water balloons at people. Or, you know, that would that would that would that would be so much fun. Like come make a splash. Yeah. Actually, at home, I think that might be a terrible idea because it might be. Yeah, it might be cold. Yeah. Well, what if you had tubs of warm water and you shot them with a no, note? That would still okay. not be good because like that's still be wet and it would be cold. You don't want to be in our in my house because Mallory and I we have strategically placed water guns around our home. Oh, I saw this. I saw you post this on Facebook. All the time. She got me yesterday. I'm like, really? She's like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> You trained her to be good wife someday. I mean, I don't know. Let's hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned you have pavilions here. Are they able for people to rent? Yeah, so that's what's the fun thing. Um, there was two, uh, two pavilions, and then we added a third. Um, so the pool house paid for the cost of the pavilion to be built in honor of, is it honor of Linda, I believe, right? Is that the one we dedicated? I'm not quite sure. Mm, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, but we, anyway. It is. I think it is, yeah. So um, we ended up paying for and, re and constructing the third pavilion. Um, and so what that does is that obviously brings more shade. You know that there's not really a lot of places provided at the pool to sit under, um, but they could rent them out. So then it obviously generates revenue back to the burrow. So if right. something major would go wrong, there would be money there to, to fix the pool and stuff like that. So any little bit helps. Yes. Which um, actually a pool rental pavilion is one of our prizes for our bingo. Yes. Oh, <laughs> so you could win yes. a pool rental. So if you, what, you came to our bingo and you won that, you have your own little soiree underneath the pavilion at the pool. Can you bring the line? I don't think alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> so it has to be an after hours little party. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're giving all my secrets. I just now let you know I'm a massive vigilante and I'm gonna walk and in the pool with a McDonald's cup and be like, mm, man, we'll you want to watch the podcast. Yeah. Switch it up because of Burger King. Yeah, because that was not secret. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why have a Burger King and McDonald's? <laughs> so, what is the bingo event? So, where's that? So, it will be at the Rec Center. It's uh, March 17th. Doors open at 12. Bingo starts at 1. Uh, there's going to be 20 regular games, and the prizes for those are $100. Um, there's going to be five special games, and those prizes will be $250 or more. Um, there's also going to be a 50-50 drawing, and then we will have food there to purchase as well. Um, and there's, I forgot something. There's a 50-50 drawing, there's food to purchase, and what was the third thing you used to say? What else? You can see I think I was going to name the menu baked goods. Baked goods. There it is. <laughs> Desserts. Um, and our food is going to be uh, turkey barbecue, uh, walking tacos, mac and cheese, pierogies, hot dogs, halushki, and then some fun. So that's going to be our menu that people will be able to purchase again. Um, it won't be one of our, won't be a huge fundraiser for us, but any, any little bit that helps our fun. Um, so you might see it as only like, oh, that's only an extra two hundred dollars, but to us, right? Sure. That's a pass for somebody. That's another little kid that could enjoy our pool, right? Sure. So, and we were correct. Like the third rebellion was named in honor of the Trinity Church. Oh, okay. oh okay. And uh, and Trinity also donated five k to uh, our shed for that will be built for this year. So oh, nice. I was correct. <laughs> Mark is watching. <laughs> hey, Mark. Mark is watching. <laughs> Mark is watching. <laughs> um, but that's another thing that, um, you know, we speak to Tom, who's obviously, uh, you know, he's in charge of the pool and recreation um, for the borough. And we always kind of go back and forth with him, too, like things that he needs at the pool. And one of the things that he recently said was the shed. Um, just to store a lawnmower in, you know, things that it's a little weed whacker, what else does he put there? Um, just lawnmower. But yeah, mostly, so um, that was one of the things he said he would really like to have. So we actually had just voted at our last meeting to agree to, to uh, fund that. And then with Trinity itself, I guess, with the 5000 So um, again, it's, it's a good organization because it doesn't, the pool still gets every single thing that they need um, without a cost bearing on our borough. Right. 
So fun fact, <laughs> I like guarded at Lincoln High School. Did you? I did. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think it was only one summer while I was in college. Because I did this thing, so in college you have to take the P course, at least one. Well, I did the least. <laughs> so I took one, and what I decided to do, I decided to take a life learning class because it got me a PE credit, and I got certified in CPR and first aid and lifeguarding, so then I could get a job for the right. summer. So that's what I did. So anyone that needs a PE credit in college, this is a good idea. There you go. First aid. Yeah, and Tom hired me. And he's good to the lifeguards. Yeah. He's very good to them. So it was a sweet summer. I was, like, was going to say, it is a great place to work if you're a teenager and you just want a couple hours. I mean, yeah. especially if you're a female and you want to get some sun. Yeah, it's, it's, the perfect, it. it's the perfect job. Yeah, and then like when you're on your break, you <laughs> jump in the pool. Yeah. It, listen, it's this pretty sweet day. I'm not going to lie. Nice. Yeah. All right, Brian says what a fantastic group. They do some great things for the community. I know, kind of figured he doesn't know. Yeah. <laughs> He's also in the group. <laughs> and on our own council. <laughs> One of your councilmen. So are you looking for lifeguards or are you in charge of that as well? Tom, is, Tom Evans is in charge of the lifeguards, so yes, that would be who you have to contact. Yeah. How can they find information about the pool pals? Um, so there's a Facebook. There is a Facebook. Um, with the pool house, so we haven't posted a whole lot, but now that you know, up and coming into the season again, uh, we'll be you'll see a lot of different postings happening. Like I said, what you'll see the most now is just the promotion of the bingo, uh, and then after that, you'll start to see you know, family fun night, things like that, and even just other stuff happening, like when the shed arrives or is built, you'll probably see posts about that, uh, stuff like that. So we're more social media present now, I think. Um, but like, like I said. Just the meetings do every third Wednesday at six thirty, and that's at the rec center. And do um, families that would like to maybe get one of these pool passes that are offered, is there a way for them to like apply or? Yeah. So if you go to our website, because uh, there is a pool house website, um, there's a link actually on the website that will take you right into the application to fill it out. You fill out the application and then it gets sent to us. And then, um, I don't know how many we have last year, I don't remember. But we did get quite a few applications, so that's why we want to try to at least double it every year. I mean, if there would be a year that we could reach that, we could award everybody a full pass that applied for it, that would fall in the income guidelines and stuff, that would be fantastic. Um, so that's what we're striving to achieve in the next couple of years, if not sooner. Nice. Yeah. And if you're a business or anybody who donated any time, if you want to help us, you know, to do, you, you know, to sponsor a family as it has. Yeah, as a business, you could do that as well. We had 44 apply last year. 44. <laughs> I love how they <laughs> <you're laughs> <you're laughs> the information is <laughs> coming in. Breaking <laughs> news. Yeah. yeah. All right. So. First half hour, we talked about a question that I we shared last week. If animals could talk, which one would be the rudest? Do you have any suggestions? Be the rudest. If they could talk, who would be the rudest? Honey badger. I can't think of any on top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> what was your answers? Um, birds. We have popular answers for cats, llamas, and birds, and lions. I can't get behind the lions, but I don't think they're rude. They're just hungry. They're so hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're, they're different. Rude. They're hungry. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could definitely see birds. Yeah. But some birds are real birds. Blue jays are like the meanest birds. They don't talk. Yeah. Could you just imagine if those things spoke? Star <laughs> I, I would say starlings are nasty too. We yeah. have them up by the house, and if I'm out with the dogs and it's like their time of year, they're like big packs. They travel packs, and they swoop down at you. Like they don't, like they just come <laughs> swooping down at your face. And I, I felt, I have felt them like past my face, and I'm like, I. 
the dogs even try to like bite at them as they like go by. Like I'm gonna punch one right in the beak one day because I can't stand these damn birds. And they, they're relentless. They're nasty. Because these birds act kind of like warlocks, like how gutsy they are to come up and try and take your food. Just so imagine, yeah, could you just imagine if they spoke to you? Yeah. Right, right. And that's what I'm saying. When these birds are flying by, I can only imagine like the insults they're saying as they're flying by. You know, yeah, like, like, it's just like, yeah. They probably hate airplanes. <laughs> You're always on, in my territory. Right, Nicole says season passes to the pool can be purchased at the Lehighton Borough office. And Ryan chimed in and he said, cats have attitudes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's true. So um, if somebody, <laughs> didn't, uh, somebody just wanted to purchase um, the passes, they can be bought at the, bur at the borough office. Um, but to apply for the, for the swim fund, it would be through the website, the application. Do you have a set opening day? Yeah, or no? Or is that like played by you? It's usually, um, it's usually right after the morning. Okay. Day. Um, but I, I think it is kind of a play by ear thing. I don't think that's ever set in stone yeah. uh, just because of the weather. Right. Yeah. All right. So we've been advertising this topic since last week. If you're into crime and mystery, it's about a 1980 crime ring that happened over in Japan on a candy company. It's called The Mysterious Man with 21 Faces. Mocked the police department and stocked Japan's supermarkets with cyanide filled candy. And it takes back in March 18th, 1984. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. Just say the word Izaki. Izaki <laughs> came home from a long day of his office and took into a warm bath. And then suddenly he heard some noise. And people came in and grabbed him naked out of the bathtub and kidnapped him, took him to a warehouse, and they actually tied up his wife and daughter, cut the phone lines, and broke into the house next door where his mother lived, tied her up too, and the men muscled his hockey into a warehouse. He had managed to escape on his own, but the kidnappers asked for a ransom of what was quoted to $4.3 million in U.S. dollars back then. They never showed up to collect the money. So there was some quiet time in between there, and three weeks later, newspapers, offices across Japan received copies of a strange letter, and it said, to the stupid police, it began, you are idiots. You have, you are pros, and you would catch us. Because you guys have such high handicap, we're going to give you some hints. They even described what kind of car they drove and what they were wearing and stuff. Went into all this detail. And then, again, they asked for ransom money. They delivered their ransom money, and it was never picked up again. And then they threatened to poison candy in the candy bar supermarkets. So they pulled all the candy off the shelves and tested every single candy and they found no traces of anything contaminated. Then there was quiet for a few months and then, uh, then in May the gang said, uh, said that they had placed the cyanide with the candy and then they actually they lost a lot of money because nobody was buying the candy and they were afraid to buy the candy and they had to lay off thousands of workers because of this and things got quiet for a little bit until the fall of 1984 where they said that they had labeled certain packages in grocery stores with cyanide so the whole entire country of japan released they went, took the cops to every single grocery store. They did find the candy laced with cyanide, and they uh, demanded four hundred thousand dollars in ransom. Again, they never showed up, picked up the money, and this went on for months and months. The police chief that was in charge of this was so upset that he couldn't catch the people. He actually committed suicide. Nobody was harmed by the cyanide, nobody had taken it, and to this day, the case is unsolved. Nobody knows who did it, 
And because of the statute of limitations ran out in for the kidnapping, 1995, the statute of limitations ran out, so they can't be charged with the kidnapping. And in 2000, uh, the statute of limitations expired for poisoning of the candy. So if they were caught today, they would never be charged for it because the statute of limitations ran out. And this is the menu, the company that they poison all the candy is a company that makes Pocky. Yeah. I, I love Pocky. Yeah. Good stuff, but not a data sign either. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> so we will post. I will post the link to the whole complete story. It is an interesting story. Uh, this happened in 1980, and uh, like I said, 84. 84, and uh, it's never been solved. It's like we did do it, Leanna. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we weren't born yet. Even there. <laughs> and actually, the, the 21 faces. Came about. There's actually a, a mis, uh, mystery book wrote in Japan called the Twenty Faces. So we really came up with this name of Twenty One Faces. So that's how they came up with the name. So yeah, how did you find this? So some people think it was an inside job or an employee when they got fired, but they said that the police interviewed thousands of people and they can't come down to any suspects. Where did you get this at? Yeah, where did you get this at? I actually heard this on a Food Network podcast. Here about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the guy they kidnapped was the president of, that, of the corporation that made the candy. Yeah. Make it right out of the tub. Yeah. Oh my god. Chilly, but... <laughs> in March. <laughs> March 18th in Japan. So mm -hmm. like an island on the water in March. Yeah, it's naked cold. coming yeah. out the back. <laughs> and then they put him in a warehouse. But he got away. Good but for then him. they did the same with family, right? Yeah, they tied up his wife. Yeah, but they left him at home. Yeah, they left him at home. So, yeah. They had this all planned out. Never came for ransom money, though. They never they demanded all this money for a couple Well, of because the Lehigh Community <laughs> Crime Watch was sitting in there watching for them, so they knew it. See? Look at that. So, crime, crime it watch works. works. Yeah, it, it works. works. <laughs> Has there anything else you like to cover with the food balance? I think so. I think we covered a lot of things. Yeah. Up and coming and exciting. So. What's the date for the bingo again? March 17th. So oh, yeah. Hi, Patrick. Today. So, um, I will be not there. You will not be there. Because, unfortunately, well, I, I don't want to say unfortunately, it's not how she's there. Well, I'm getting married the night before. Oh. Um, Ooh, so, super we're going to be preoccupied. <laughs> just a little bit. Doing married couple things. <laughs> yeah, right. Just being hungover. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just hungover and just being hungover and then say we're your wedding. <laughs> oh, why? <laughs> Alright, so Colossal Radio info. Make sure you download the free Colossal Radio app and tune in Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays starting at 9 a.m. for the Doc and Kate show. And then the Doc and Friends show is Tuesday and Thursday at 9 a.m. And Uncle Kevin's show, Monday through Friday, 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. And every Tuesday, Monday through, or every Tuesday, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. is Oldies with Mike. And then every Friday, 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. if you're into your heavy metal, Retro Rock Rewind is on. And then Saturday, there's an 80 show and a whole bunch of other new shows that are coming. So download the free app. Make sure you subscribe to the Colossal Radio YouTube channel and like the Facebook page. And uh, make sure you tune in to Colossal Radio's Facebook page as well for Dave Bookie as he does business spotlights across the area. And make sure you like and subscribe our YouTube channel and Facebook page for our show. And Coming up 
Our next show, March 11th, we have the first half hour to Palmerton High School Drama Club will be on talking about their musical Chicago. And the second half hour, members of the Relate Elementary PTO will be on talking about their events coming up. And we are going to be talking about, since Chicago musical takes place in the 20s, we're going to talk about the best 1920s slang. Um, and that's it. <laughs> and on that, because I could talk like that the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> <It's annoying. laughs> well, this, even 1920s, little laugh. Listen, I love Chicago, like the musical. Right. So, I might bring out some songs. There you go. I don't know. And coming up in April 8th, we have the first half hour at Lehigh Gap Nature Center. We'll be on talking about things that they have planned. They have different summer camps for youth during to the outdoors, and uh, we're working on other shows as well. So, we're busy. We're very busy. That's going to do it for tonight. Thank you again for coming on. And uh, make sure you follow our Facebook page for any upcoming uh, shows and topics. So we'll see you all next time. Well, Jason says, Groovy New Studio. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>